It is probably the most important health marker. VO2 max is the strongest predictor for your life expectancy. By a significant margin, the most important predictor of how long you're going to live and by implication also how well you're going to live. Today's guest is Ulrich Dempla, the CEO and co-founder of Carol, the world's most effective exercise bike that's designed to accomplish a special form of cardio called Rehit, which uses two 20-second sprints to deliver the same results as a 45-minute run. Today, Ulrich joins us to explain the latest science of high-intensity cardio training and how you can dramatically improve your cardiovascular fitness in a very short time. In eight weeks, and this is over many studies and shown in our data, users see on average a 12% improvement in VO2 max in cardiorespiratory fitness from just doing three of those workouts a week. Now to put this into context, as you age, from the age of 30, you lose about 10% of VO2 max per decade. So in eight weeks, you can basically more than reverse the loss in fitness of a whole decade. All right, Ulrich, welcome officially to the Fit Father Project podcast, my friend. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be a very enlightening conversation for everyone who gets to listen or watch because I think that you and your company have made an undeniable case that exercise does not need to take a lot of time to produce incredible results to your cardiorespiratory fitness, to your power input, output. And I am so excited to have you on here to talk about um, this, I guess you say, new form of training called Rehit that mm -hmm. you're pioneering. So please kind of introduce us to how you got passionate into this work and the kind of stuff that you're doing with Carol and how you're trying to change the world. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm by background, a uh, mechanical engineer, grew up um, dreaming, building cars, airplanes, actually worked for three big German car makers, but spent most of my life um, as, a, as a management consultant working with hospitals and healthcare systems. And um, our focus was really always to make patient care better, more effective, um, and prevention is like a really big thing in that. And we did advanced stuff. We, we did um, like developed AI models, machine learning to identify which patients would benefit most from which interventions. Mm -hmm. And that's all great. <laughs> that's all great. But the, the fact is just the most important intervention for most people is exercise and mm -hmm. maintaining good cardiorespiratory fitness and a high VO2 max. So that's the measure for your cardiorespiratory fitness. Mm -hmm. And then uh, through some twists and turns and coincidence, um, we, we got into developing actually a tool that allows people to do exactly that in, yeah, I think the most efficient way possible. Um, so yeah, a little bit of coincidence, but, but here we are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really powerful how life brings us into different areas. And then oftentimes we mm -hmm. get to connect those areas and then often be of service. And I really have a lot of respect for you. Um, one, because I have a I, deep inside, I kind of like want to become an engineer myself one day because I think it's so cool to make things. And then two, obviously mm. applying that to fitness is so beautiful. Um, <laughs> but like, let's define VO2 max as we enter this conversation because we're going to talk a lot about heart yeah. health and performance. And I think a lot of people are seeing more markers of cardiovascular fitness. If they're wearing trackers or rings and stuff yeah. like this, they see heart rate variability, maybe VO2 max. What is that? And, and yeah. how is that so important for how the heart functions and how we can live a long time? Yeah, sure. So VO2 max is a, a measure of how much oxygen you can burn, how much, much oxygen you can metabolize during aerobic exercise. And um, so the factors that drive VO2 max is on the one hand, um, oxygen delivery. So that's um, your lungs, your heart, kind of how much blood you uh pump which each stroke your stroke volume plasma volume um, that's oxygen delivery and then the other side is oxygen consumption and and that's critical there your mitochondria are really important so those are the powerhouses in your cells where you actually burn oxygen and so cardiorespiratory 
like exercise that enhances your cardiorespiratory fitness should ideally um, target both of those sites and improve your both your oxygen delivery and your oxygen consumption. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of that's kind of what it is. Um, the other answer I could have given is it is probably the most important health marker. So VO2 max is the strongest predictor for your life expectancy and by some margin. So it's really by a significant margin, you're the most important um, predictor of how long you're going to live and by implication also how well you're going to live. Mm. And there's there have been great studies with, with tens of thousands of uh, subjects. And for example, one thing which always blows my mind is that low cardiorespiratory fitness leads to more avoidable deaths than smoking, diabetes, and obesity combined. And so that that's really tells you something. If you, if you think about it, I should do something for my health, maybe lose some weight, hmm, is maybe not the biggest lever. So getting your cardiorespiratory fitness, getting your VO2 max in good shape is the most important thing you can do for your life expectancy, for your lifespan, for your health span. Mm -hmm. So that ultimately means like, I guess, do more cardiovascular exercise every week. And is there a recommended amount that people should do? And then why mm -hmm. are people not getting this stuff in? Yeah. So uh, it, it means exactly that in the first instance, and we will talk more later about what alternatives there are, but the recommendation is for two and a half hours, 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity exercise. So two and a half hours, that's uh, quite a bit. Now, in light of how important it is and how much you'd get from it, it's also quite shocking how few of us actually do it. So again, there's this uh, very uh, kind of, I mean, almost shocking studies that show that 95%, 95% of Americans do not reach the recommended amount of cardio exercise. And yeah, given how important it is and how much you could gain from it, it's, it's really hard to understand. And uh, people try. And scientific survey after scientific survey, the number one reason why people don't exercise is lack of time. So the, the main perceived barrier is lack of time. Now, there, in the scientific community, there's, there's two camps, basically. Um, some that say it's, it's all just an excuse. Um, we're, we're either lazy or, or exercise is not fun enough or not uh, nice enough. Um, and another camp that says, yes, no, we believe that. Um, there's trillion dollar companies like Meta, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Netflix, and so on that all compete for our time. It's even called the attention economy. Mm -hmm. And with, and, and they're, they're brilliant at it. That's why they're trillion dollar companies. Um, uh, and so we, we are also in that camp. So we believe when people tell us they don't have time for exercise. Um, in fact, we, we don't even have time to sleep. We sleep like two hours less than we did some 60 years ago. And so our approach to, to help people do more exercise is try to find and try to enable people to do very, very efficient exercise mm -hmm. that takes a lot less time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's what I find so compelling about your methodology and the Carol bike that you've created. And we're going to get into that in just a second, mm -hmm. how you can do extremely short, high intensity bursts and get a lot of great effect. Um, and I also just want to pause here and emphasize for our community listening, like cardio is, is non-negotiable for a long life. And the nice thing about the workouts that we do with Fifth Father is they incorporate strength with cardio and mobility. So mm -hmm. you're getting some benefit, but we do want to be doing some cardiovascular exercise. And sure, you could go try to jog for 60 minutes, but as you found out through the actual research and studies, it mm. might only take a couple 20 second sprints to get the same exact effects. So I want to tee you up to basically explain what you guys have discovered and popularized called reduced exertion, high intensity training. So rehit, which is a version of 
high intensity interval training that, you know, yeah. many people might be familiar with, but it's a, it's a reduced scale down version that produces crazy effects. So let's get into, you know, how you've helped people overcome this time barrier and get crazy good results. Yeah. So first I, I shall say we're, we're not alone in, in that effort. And in fact, so we, we work and partner with the leading exercise scientists in the world, um, who have come up with this rehit protocol, reduced exertion, high intensity interval training. Um, what, what we've done, uh, we've built a piece of equipment that takes that, um, brilliant research out of the lab and makes it accessible for normal people. Um, and that's, that's mainly our role. So we're, we don't want to take all the credit for it. <laughs> Might have given you more credit, but still, I mean, the application side is, is super important for moving the needle. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's our, that's really our aspiration. We want to move the needle on this inactivity epidemic. Yeah. Um, and now maybe briefly. So rehit is, um, yeah, most people will be familiar with, with hit, with high intensity interval training, which is undoubtedly very effective. No question. Um, and it's shorter than moderate intensity exercise, but it's not all that short. So if you do um, six, eight, 10 intervals that are a minute or, or four times four minutes intervals with the rest periods, you're quickly 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. It's, it's not that time efficient. And the other thing is the rate of perceived exertion. So kind of just how hard it feels mm -hmm. is very high. And that makes it yeah. quite difficult for many people to, to do and adhere to. And that's, sure. that's really critical. Um, and so uh, the, the researchers have been working on this. I mean, literally for decades, trying to titrate down what is the minimum amount you need to do to get really good results. And, and so there, there was literally study after study where they've paired it back and they found that 220 seconds at maximum intensity. So that's really sprint interval training, mm -hmm. 220 seconds at maximum intensity delivers the same fitness and health benefits as a 45 to 60 minutes jog. And, and that is, uh, that, that's obviously if you, if time is an issue for you, a very, very attractive proposition. So a rehit ride a rehit workout would usually entail like a very short gentle warm-up and then a, a first 20 second sprint in which you go all out then um, a, a recovery period up to three minutes a second 20 second sprint and then three minute cool down the, the whole thing can be done in as little as five minutes so mm -hmm. extremely efficient um, the, the max it would take you is is eight minutes and you get the same benefits as a 45 to 60 minute jog. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing and, and really exciting. Mm -hmm. One, because the, it really does eliminate the excuse, I don't have time when yeah. everyone has five minutes. Like that's a fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two, I think it teaches us a lot about our bodies. The fact that the body does yeah. respond to that. I think it moves mm -hmm. us away from a narrow minded perspective on exercise as calories burned or the amount yes. of time we've been yes. doing things. And it shows that exercise is a stimulus that mm. creates cellular changes that lead to adaptations. And I think this is something that you and I share is we do like to, you know, nerd out, if you will, on some of the downstream biochemistry and the changes that happen. Mm -hmm. And now yeah. what I think is fascinating is the changes that happen from this high intensity exercise are also a lot of the same changes that help you live a long time, yeah. like mitochondrial yeah. biogenesis. Yes. So can yes. we get into a little bit of the science of what happens sure. when your body sure. gets a rehit stimulus? Yes. So what we effectively do when we do a rehit workout is we, we simulate an emergency situation. So the energy demand in your thighs, in your legs goes up by a factor of 100 compared to rest. So it's a very severe disturbance of homeostasis of like your, your balanced state. And um, you, you force your body to tap into the fastest energy systems. 
So the, the body has several energy systems. The mm -hmm. very fastest is, is phosphocreatine. Mm -hmm. And that, that's literally available immediately, but it lasts for only about 10 seconds. And then the next fastest is your glycogen system. So glycogen is sugar stored. Or you have a lot in your liver, but also a lot in your muscles. And as your body sees this rapid increase, this massive spike in energy demand, it basically prepares you for, you know, a situation where you would have to run for your life or fight for your life. And it mobilizes lots of energy. It mobilizes lots of glycogen. And in fact, it mobilizes around 25 to 30% of the glycogen in your thighs. Now, for from an energy perspective, from a, from a caloric perspective, that's a tremendous amount of energy that could sustain you for a long time. And in those two short sprints, you actually burn through only very little of it. Mm -hmm. But that's not even necessary. So the, the, the adaptation pathway gets triggered already by the mobilization of the glycogen because stored and bound to the glycogen is a molecule called AMP that gets released and mobilized with the glycogen, activated to AMPK, um, which is in, in itself a very important signaling molecule. And it um, triggers then further the activation of something called a molecule called PGC1-alpha, which is your body's master regulator for mitochondrial biogenesis. Mm -hmm. So that means that tells your body that it has to develop um, more and larger mitochondria. And those are then the powerhouses in your cells mm -hmm. that help you burn oxygen. Mm -hmm. and, and so with that very, very short stimulus, um, with that very, very short sprint, you can create a very powerful stimulus that has yeah, the, the same effect as a 45 to 60 minute drug. And, it is actually both lead to the same endpoint. So when you, mm -hmm. when you do moderate intensity, um, endurance training, the adaptation pathway is, is called the calcium channel. A, a molecule called CM, CAMK gets, um, activated that then triggers PGC1 alpha. Um, and, and CAMK gets activated with 45 to 60 minutes of like moderate intensity work. But in rehit, we use this different pathway. We go via AMPK, mm -hmm. and there's like mere seconds to create that stimulus. And that's, mm -hmm. yeah, really just in terms of efficiency, hard to beat. Yes. And I want to I wanna restate that in my own words, although mm -hmm. you made it very, very clear. Basically, exercise is stressing the body, and yeah. the body is going to adapt to that stress. And ultimately, that adaptation happens on a cellular level inside mm -hmm. the mitochondria, the powerhouses of those cells, they get a signal to make more of them and to become stronger mm -hmm. and more robust. And ultimately like our energy, our ability to metabolize foods, to perform and exercise, our life energy is directly proportional to the density and health of our mitochondria. Yes. And yes. so when we find ways to pulse stress for our mitochondria, we get stronger and healthier. And you can do that either through long cardio, which has benefits in its own pathways, or very short re-hit style exercise where you're going all out for 20 mm -hmm. seconds. Now, most of us are probably not going all out like sprinting anymore. You know, that's just not something we're doing as we get yeah. older, but you found a way to actually make it very comfortable on the Carol bike. So show like describe your experience in that 20 second all out burst that you're doing several times a week. You're on the bike. What's that like? Like it, the, the Carol yeah. bike says time to go T walk me through those 20 seconds. And like, what does that yeah, stimulus sure, feel like? Sure, sure. So, um, you do it two to three times per week. That's enough. Um, you, you can do it more often if you want, but it's two to three times is enough. Now we've designed the Carol bike to make this, um, experience and to make also the exercise as simple as possible. What's important for this to work properly is that you hit your, your peak, your peak power, and that you really push to your limits. It's for a short period, but in that short period, we want you to push to your limits and, and to hit your peak power. Basically three things are needed. You have to have the right resistance level. 
it has to be applied at the right time. And the right time is basically after you've built up a lot of speed. It's a bit like cycling up a hill. You want to build some, some pace up yeah. beforehand, not uh, in the steep bit. And it has to be applied really quickly. And mm -hmm. that way you hit your maximum intensity and your maximum power. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, the Carol bike has fully automated that. So you, the, there's no buttons to turn or so. The, it's, it's computer controlled and the, your optimal resistance gets applied at the optimal time very rapidly. And that makes it quite easy. And essentially, you, all you have to do is go hard when the machine tells you to go hard. Yeah. Um, and then how the sprint feels. So the first 10 seconds, you know, they, they feel actually quite uh, good still because it's um, this is the first 10 seconds. Then 10 to 15 gets harder. And, and the last five seconds of an all out sprint are definitely hard. So um, if, you, if you've listened to this now and think like, no, this is too good to be true. Um, I promise you, once you try it, you will understand that this is a, a proper workout. Mm -hmm. So your heart rate will shoot up. So for me, it goes to like over 160 easily. Nice. Um, I, I breathe very heavily and um, I, I need a moment to recover. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel afterwards, definitely I've done a workout. Mm -hmm. what, what works very beautifully for me is um, like 20 seconds is short enough for me to push just through. Yes. So even if the last five seconds are a bit, I don't want to say painful, but yeah, they're, they're hard. Mm -hmm. um, the, the end is in sight and the, the light at the end of the tunnel is so bright that I can push through. Mm -hmm. and, and by comparison, so I, I go also sometimes, not, not every weekend, but um, enough weekends, say for a 5K run on the weekend. And to, to get a semi-decent time, I have to push myself every single step. Mm -hmm. And so the, like the amount of willpower I need for that um, is for me a lot more than doing these two 20-second sprints. Right. Um, so th those are the sprints. And then you have like uh, up to three-minute recovery, second sprint, and three-minute cooldown. And in the recovery and cooldown, um, we encourage our riders kind of to try to, so the sprints are obviously very the sympathetic nervous system uh, is in, is an overdrive. Like, it's like you run for your life, um, figuratively speaking. Um, and then in the recovery and cool down, we want to kind of focus on our breathing, try to get the heart rate down, balance the nervous system, like stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. so that when we come off the bike, um, you know, we, we literally can continue our day um, mm -hmm. and uh, are ready to, yeah, the next thing that, that we need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great description. Um, as someone who's done it myself, mm -hmm. it is really smooth and fun. Um, you get prompted on the screen when it's time to go all out. You rip it. You get to see your, your power output in terms of how the bike sees, the, the, how hard you're pressing on the pedals and mm -hmm. how quickly you turn that. And it's just motivating. You want to keep on pushing that thing. And then you get nice prompting to breathe. So I love it. And another thing I'm thinking is, you know, for many people listening to this, they're, they're regularly exercising. And something like rehit, because it is so short in duration, it's not a lot of volume of exercise. It's just a potent stimulus. It slots in nicely with different types of workouts because it's not going to create as big of an inroad into your recovery as yeah. say a five or 10 mile run. Like if someone was yeah. into running, you do that. Like that's a lot of steps. That's a lot of connective mm -hmm. tissue load. Like this is just, you know, a potent stimulus that actually, you know, is not going to harm your recovery or even be that challenging on your nervous system because it's just two, two bouts. So yeah. I just see how this could be slotted in really well with someone who's doing maybe full body strength training and then mm -hmm. doing a rehit on another day. And then maybe actually doing some leg work because the rehit yeah. didn't trash your legs. So yeah. talk to us about like how you incorporate this into your training. Cause I know you also like to strength train. Yeah, sure. So I do, I do every day some exercise and uh, for me, it's every other day is rehit. And I do that first thing in the morning. So I have the, um, a bike basically on my way from the bed to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's just, um, very easy to form a routine. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's every other day on the in-between days. Um, I would do so a short 
um, routine of, of lifting weights, um, big compound movements, five, six, um, and typically just one set to failure. That's, mm-hmm. that's how I do. And, and that's then short. That's also just 15, maybe, yeah. maybe up to 20 minutes, but, but not terribly much. Um, and then I go once a weekend with my son, uh, proper, uh, weightlifting. And there we, we focus on basically the, the big powerlifting moves and, and, and some other kind of compound movements. And yes. that can take two or three hours, but that's there. We're not so worried about efficiency because I find it's, um, that's just fun. That's uh, fun. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a yeah. beautiful time with my son is, is, and we, we enjoy it. So that's, that's, a. Uh, less important that we, that we're super quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just love how like this kind of cardiovascular work that, you know, you're accumulating, let's say you're doing the 10 minute workout and you're doing it every other day. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're getting 40 to 45 minutes of like this Mm -hmm. kind of like great stimulus on top of your strength training. And it just makes you better at all your other activities. So that's exciting. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Um, one is, so obviously different kinds of exercise bikes have become popular. And I think the brand name that many people have heard of yeah. is a Peloton. And I've, sure. I've never bought one. I've ridden one when I've been at a hotel gym before. And certain people like these spinning classes. Why is what you've developed like different than that? And, and what would be like the main difference in case someone was like, you know, I've always thought about getting an exercise bike Peloton, but now I know about Carol. Like, how do you speak to the differences of yeah. those types of products in the market? Sure. So, I mean, they're both bikes. They both have a screen. That's almost where the similarities stop. So Peloton, I don't want to poo-poo them or anything. They've built a great product. And, and if, if that's your thing, then, then it's brilliant. So Peloton has basically celebrity instructors, great soundtracks, and um, kind of a sense of community, even though you're working out from home. Their workouts are fairly standard. Um, 30, 45 minutes, they have hit workouts in there. Um, and in fact, you can use, so the, the Carol bike majors on rehit. That's, it's fully optimized on rehit, but it's a very versatile bike. So we have, um, 22 own workouts. So our workouts need to be, um, scientific, effective, and ideally short. Um, and it's so, so our bike is not a closed system. You can use it with uh, many third party apps and you can put the, the Peloton app on there. Uh, some of our customers do not too many, but some do. And, and we, we can see from the data that the intensity, the power levels reached during Peloton rides is just way, way lower. So it's, it's, um, even if it says hit, it's just, yeah, it's, it's higher intensity, but it, it wouldn't get to that level of stimulus. Yeah. So, and, and what, what we offer is like maximum results in minimum time and scientifically validated workouts that are, that have been proven to give you those results. Um, and then I guess another thing, so our bike doesn't have any buttons to turn. It's really very much automated and, um, through our AI algorithms, we can tailor the ride like first to pretty much any age and fitness level. So there's, there's no lower age limit or no upper age limit. You just have to fit on the bike physically. So you need to be tall enough or, um, that, that's the main thing, but we have users from 10, 11 up to 82. I don't know what the last one, but, but hmm. so my parents are at that age and they use the bike fairly religiously every other day. And, and so. We can do that because we have so much, like we have by far the largest rehit database in the world. We have now over 30,000 riders, um, millions of rides. And that means we can analyze it and we can build models on that to tailor the workout to somebody exactly like you and Mm -hmm. to, to keep adjusting it to your fitness level so that you, you continue to get like a really powerful stimulus out of that very short workout. And, um, you hit, I mean, obviously like at, at some point, everybody will hit a plateau. We're not all becoming, I don't know, Olympic gold medalists. That just doesn't happen, sadly. Um, but with our algorithms, we can ensure that you go as far as you can and that the, the exercise keeps being challenging 
and keeps being effective and delivering like the best results possible. Mm -hmm. I love that. And what are some results or case studies you've seen people in terms of measurable cardiovascular improvements using the Carol bikes, so let's say from one to three months, like what have mm -hmm. some people experienced in terms of change in heart rate, change in VO2 max, yeah. change in maybe heart rate variability, or even just their ability to produce power? Like what are yes. some results that people see mm -hmm. in the, in the time window that's relatively short? So there's, um, so I obviously have some anecdotes as well, but, yeah. um, there's really robust data on the level of improvement you see. So, um, in eight weeks, and this is like over many studies and shown in our data, um, users see on average a 12% improvement in VO2 max in cardiorespiratory fitness from just doing three of those workouts a week. Um, now to put this into context, um, as you age from the age of 30, you lose about 10% of VO2 max per decade. Mm -hmm. So in eight weeks, you can basically more than reverse the loss in fitness of a of a whole decade and that that i mean that feels significant uh, it's it's sure. great that you have on the bike all the metrics and you can see your progress but it's really something you can feel like it's not subtle yes and then um in terms of scientific studies like most of them the the longest ones are maybe up to 20 weeks and have shown an improvement in vo2 max um of 20 percent and then we see from our own users that that um, continues as you, um, as you, uh, the longer you do the exercise. And um, now I don't want to show off, but so I've improved, like personally, my VO two max by fifty percent within the wow. first year um, cool. of using the bike. And uh, I've just done a VO two max test uh, two days ago. And I was comfortably in, in the high band for my age. Um, and that's, that's with the Carol bikes. I, I do sometimes other things, as I said before, um, that I go for a run or so, but the main component of my cardio training is really, um, the, are really the rehead rides. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. That is so cool and inspiring. And just, just think like, out, your, your results, I mean, to improve by 50% is amazing. Mm -hmm. But even to improve it by 20%, knowing yeah. the 10, 10% decade per loss, that, that's literally what people say when they're marketing and saying, you know, I, you're in your 50s, you want to feel like you're in your 30s? Well, from a cardiovascular perspective, it's kind of like yeah. getting back there. And that's yes. Yes. so yes. cool. Um, maybe and, and maybe I, just I, to be humble, I should say, maybe I wasn't in that great shape when I yeah, started. Yeah, right, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably... But I, I know now... Um, yes, I'm comfortably in, in the high band, um, for my age bracket and, and that's, yeah, that's, that's due to the rehit workouts. And you know, what's hilarious. And I, I was thinking about this is, you know, if someone doesn't have time and you're in the, you know, you still believe you don't have time, you can park your Carol bike in front of your TV and still mm. watch your Netflix show with your family yeah, and bust exactly out your workout. That. I mean, yes. I have one behind me that's facing the TV mm -hmm. I have in my exercise room office and. You know, I, I, yeah. I get engaged with the workout and I'm not actually putting the TV on at least right now, yeah. but you could, <laughs> it's going to really slot in anywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you get what I have. I have my bike, um, kind of, I've got sliding doors South facing. Mm -hmm. And so I open them in the morning and, and I get the morning sun. Well, if nice. there's sun in London, but if there's sun, I, I get at least morning light, fresh air, uh, a short, sharp workout, uh, but it really boosts all like all your systems power up mm -hmm. and it's just a great start to the day. Mm -hmm. Nice. I love that. Yeah. I think in the morning time, it'd just be so good because mm -hmm. like even psychologically you start the day having checked this movement box oh, yes, and, yes. and like that mm -hmm. stacks with so much momentum and positive energy. Like once you've done that in the morning, like I know if I cold punch in the morning, if I do a, yeah. a short workout in the morning, I'm more yeah. likely to eat healthy, to be productive yes. during the day, to feel energized. And it just creates positive momentum and it doesn't need to take a lot of time. So that yeah. psychological routine benefit is massive. Exactly. This is your first win banked for the day and then you can go from strength to strength. Yeah. And I do want to talk about routines and, and some of that stuff in just a moment. But first, I love that 
you know, although you have the Carol bike platform as a great way to do this, you are just a fan of like rehit generally. Mm -hmm. So if someone does not have a Carol bike yet, but they just have like their body, like what yes. are some other ways they could get the benefits of this rehit concept? Um, whether yeah. it's just running hills, like whatever, please, please speak into that. Yes. Yes. So maybe a couple of words of cautions, kind of how I probably personally wouldn't try to do it. So I find um, a treadmill going all out sprinting on a treadmill, I, I would find slightly risky in terms of injury. Maybe a rower is also um, because it's a complex movement, um, I, I might become jerky. Um, a regular stationary bike. Well, we've tried it and it doesn't work terribly well if you have to kind of manually dial in the resistance um, while you're pedaling at top speed, uh, get the right resistance applied fast. It's just not the greatest experience. Um, viable alternatives would be one, um, an air bike. Yeah. So the CrossFit community, they love air bikes and go all out on, on like really high intensity efforts there. Um, if you have access, if you have an air bike at home or in your gym, by all means, try to see whether it's a good experience for you. Um, one qualification there, um, you, you wouldn't have all the metrics and an air bike is fairly loud, but kind of an air bike is essentially a bike with one gear. So it's, it's like one defined, um, relationship between how fast you, you work and what your power output is. Mm -hmm. And so that's great for, uh, but for one person for who this uh, air bike is exactly right. So maybe for a 30 year old cro CrossFit athlete, um, for like my mother, my mother is 80, 81. I, I shouldn't make yeah, her older than she is. She's 81. Probably for her. She, she uses our Carol bike every other day and she can, because we have not basically one gear, but 255 and we can tailor it to any age and fitness level. And so, um, there we, we just have more flexibility and kind of can make that exercise work really well for more people. But if you have access to an air bike, by all means, that's a good thing. Um, and the other thing, uh, literally at no cost, um, sprinting, like uh, hill sprints, that would be great. Or, or yeah. even just on, on a regular running track, really, really, really 20 seconds all out sprinting is... Uh, like in terms of how that gets my heart rate up, I, I would think that's also an effective, um, mm -hmm. you, you could build an effective form of rehit with that. Mm -hmm. Be careful that you don't trip. Yeah, that's one thing. Um, and then I, I think like in my local park, I never see people sprint all out. So there's a little bit, um, especially if you're not top fit yet, that people just feel awkward. Um, if you have the possibility, sprinting is, uh, is is a very good form. And if your joints can handle it, wonderful. Yeah. And and I just want to emphasize, like, for what we're talking about in this podcast with this rehit concept, like, we're talking you're attempting to reach 100% of yes, voluntary maximal effort. So, like, a very intense hike where you might only be hitting like 75% or 80% over a hard sustained push for a couple minutes is not the same thing. Yeah. It's be more like hit, but you really want to go all out. So I could see getting on a hill and which is nice because it, it gives you more resistance, obviously, and it kind of mm -hmm. limits how fast you could possibly move your legs. Yeah. It could be a great way. And then you'd walk for a few minutes and then you do one more 20 yeah. second hill sprint and that could be a workout. Um, yeah. And I, I, I laugh because like back in the day, um, I was not doing quite rehit, but when I was a competitive bodybuilder, I would use, do high intensity interval training on a bike. And I totally mm -hmm. know the feeling. It's like, oh, it's time for the interval. You start to crank that button up as much as you can and pedal, 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 and then you have to down crank it. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's possible, but definitely not the yeah. best. But either way, what I want people to take from this is certainly that exercise can be very short. There's a benefit to getting super intense for a short period of time, these 20 second bursts. Um, and I think this is just such an important message to get out into people's psyches mm. and hopefully into their lives and their habits. So I, I guess that's kind of where I want to take this uh, towards the end of this conversation is to talk about health and habit formation from your own personal reflections and, and kind of like what you'd like to see in terms of the vision of 
a healthier world using technologies like Rehit mm -hmm. and other stuff that's probably around the corner. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing, and we're super aware of that and um, really try to build it into our product is adherence and sticking with your workout is really the most important thing. Um, it's, it's the only thing that matters, really. If you have something you can stick to, perfect. Um, mm -hmm. If you have something that's fun for a short while, maybe not so perfect because in many ways, exercise is or can be like a diet. Yeah. If you, if you go on a crash diet, you will lose a lot of weight quickly. But most people, very sadly, as soon as they come off the diet, just put it on as fast. And with exercise, it's just the same thing. So the, the training effect, if you do efficient and effective exercise is very fast. But the detraining effect is just as fast or even faster. So therefore, you, you have to have a workout, a routine that fits into your everyday life. And, and so for me, that wouldn't be, yeah, celebrity instructors and, and great soundtrack wouldn't do that if I don't have the time. So I've, I've got three children, mm -hmm. I've got a busy job. And, and so time comes at a premium and I need something that I can do whatever happens. And th that was basically our thought process when we developed the bike to, to give people something they can stick to and that they can fit that fits into their life. Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And I think there's also something powerful about having the bike itself. I remember reading a book many years ago called the power of habit. It's got a yellow mm. cover and it had a really simple and powerful framework it presented. And it basically said that all habits are a loop that start mm -hmm. off with some kind of cue, often yeah. a visual cue. There's the routine we perform itself. That is the action of the habit. And then we get a reward. And I think with the Caro bike, it seems a, a sticky thing. If someone can get behind mm -hmm. the science because you have the visual cue of the bike, you happen to have set it up in your bedroom. So it's unavoidable. You, you encounter mm -hmm. that all the time. The routine itself is short with the least mm -hmm. amount of friction. You just hop on and fall along. And then the immediate reward is you have yes. all the different chemistry changes. And then you probably mm -hmm. stack that with a breakfast or some coffee or yeah. whatever you do. Yeah. And now you can see how this ends up being a sticky habit yeah. loop. Um, exactly. so I just wanted to speak into that. That seems really good. Yeah. And I, I think one thing, that many of our users like as well is, is the metrics and the quantification. So if you have, yeah. you, you get with each ride, um, a rich set of metrics, you get your fitness score, your peak power and so on. So you have always something to shoot for, to keep yourself honest as well. Um, yeah. try to improve. And, um, if you're that type of person, uh, I, I certainly am kind of, I, I want to hit a, a new best if I can, I can't yeah. uh, do it every time, but I'd like to get it as close as possible and, and see that I've put in like a good shift. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, this was like super informative and exciting. I hope that people take this conversation and, and begin to incorporate very high intensity exercise in a safe manner. Um, and mm -hmm. of course, like Carol bike is a platform that we support and we're behind. I think that like stationary bikes are some of the most joint friendly ways. And then when you yep. factor in the fact that you have the, basically the AI and the gears and the metrics and everything to be able to present this form of exercise so safely, that's a slam dunk. It's a slam dunk for anyone who okay. wants to be more consistent with high intensity exercise to live a long time, to support their mitochondria. And it pairs so well with all the foundations mm -hmm. that we teach inside our fit father program. So where can people head to learn more about the Carol bike? And yeah. maybe you can share with us a little bit about the process of like getting one, if someone wants mm -hmm. to get one, if there's any guarantees that you have when people try these sure. things, et cetera. Sure. So, um, we, we sell exclusively via our web store at, um, carolbike.com and our website has also a ton of further like resources, information links to, um, like the, the most important studies and so on. Um, we, we don't operate a lot of showrooms. You, you will find our bikes in, in high end performance studios. Um, some of the, the more advanced gyms, we were not in, um, the big box, uh, mm -hmm. gyms. That's, that's 
not yet anyway. Um, if you decide that you want to try a bike, one thing we do offer is um, when you purchase, you have a 100 day, we call it 100 day risk-free trial. So that's essentially more than enough time to, to see whether, whether you like it, um, whether you can stick to it and whether you see results. Yeah. More than enough time. Yeah. If for any reason it's not for you, you can just call us and we get the bike back and you get a full refund. And that's basically how we give our, our users, our customers assurance that they, that they get something that actually suits them. Yeah. Well, I, I'm thinking that's, that's great. I love that. I think that's just a wonderful way to do business to be able to give people the opportunity to try it out. I mean, mm -hmm. you could see a VO2 max, if you did it consistently for, you know, those eight weeks, you'd have time to really yeah. know and see your exactly. improvements. And one other thing that comes to my mind is, you know, at least at the time of us recording this living in the Northern hemisphere, like we're heading into colder temperatures and weather. Yeah. And I think that's a time seasonally every year that people start to do less movement and less exercise because let alone cardio, cause they're not getting outside. Yeah. I could see how a tool like this would be critical during the winter mm. time to still crush and improve your cardio without having the benefits of nice outdoor weather and, you know, doing whatever people do. So I see there's a yeah. seasonal benefit to this too. And I think it's pretty timely that we're releasing this now. Yeah, yeah. no, I totally agree. And because if you, if you have something you're passionate about, if you're passionate about hiking, if you're passionate about, you know, uh, other outdoor sports, wonderful, but maybe you can't do them all way around, uh, all year round. So this is also a wonderful backup. Well, Ulrich, thank you for your time today. This is mm -hmm. at Carol Bike, that's C-A-R-O-L Bike, and you can Google it or go directly to their website. We will have links in the show notes if you're checking this out on the Fit Father Project blog or wherever you're listening or watching to this episode. Um, I am grateful that I have one now to incorporate into my training. I'm excited to see the continued VO2 max benefits, and I appreciate you coming on and just literally illuminating us and uh, congratulations for all the fitness gains you've made. It's very, very impressive. Thank you so much. Yeah. Th thank you so much for having me and thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Fit Father Project Podcast. If you love what you heard, please rate and review our podcast on Apple Podcasts. It really helps spread this show to more men who need this valuable info. To watch full video episodes of this podcast and other motivational videos to inspire your training and more, Visit our Fit Father Project YouTube channel. It's free and everything's made for busy guys over 40 like you. Visit youtube.com forward slash Fit Father Project to get access to our entire video library. And finally, if you or someone in your life is interested in becoming a fit father or needs help losing weight, building muscle, and living healthier after age 40, then visit fitfatherproject.com where you can see our proven programs, supplement line for guys 40 plus, and free meal plan and workouts to get you started. This is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi signing off. I'll see you in the next episode.